Welcome to this week's Future Toolbox podcast. We explore the Z to A of life skills, where each letter stands for a topic and essential tool to help you get ahead in life. Meet Jules and Mark, creators of the multi-award winning Future Toolbox, and enjoy their straightforward approach to creating growth mindsets that help people turn their dreams into realities. Whether you're a teen in education, a parent, a teacher, or part of a community group, start creating positive habits from today. Welcome to our latest Z2A podcast with me, Mark, and Jules from the multi-award winning Future Toolbox. Hello and welcome everyone. Now this is where we pick a letter and a topic and discuss how you can use our tools to improve your own personal development and life. So what's this week's letter? Ooh, what we've chosen for this episode is the letter S for summertime self-care. Yeah, summertime, isn't it? People love the summer because the sun comes out, it's bright, it's sunny. Well, most of the time anyway. I was going to say, we are talking about the UK here and maybe (laughs) it hasn't been quite as sunny as we'd like. But yeah, summertime self-care, particularly if you're on a break from your education or you're just about to get your GCSE results, can be quite a stressful time. So we just really wanted to check in with everybody, whether you are awaiting your results or whether you're just enjoying the summer and just making sure that you are looking after yourselves. Yeah, and also at the time of talking, lots of people have had their A-level results as well. And of course, before that, graduates would have graduated. So there's a lot of stuff going on, isn't there? There is a lot of stuff going on. It is key to be aware of all these stressors in your life and working a way out to look after yourself. And self-care is something that is banded about a lot at the moment. And to be fair, it's not all face masks and films, is it? Face masks and films. I love that (laughs) phrase. (laughs) Although there's nothing wrong with a face mask and a film. You might struggle sometimes to see the film if you wear a face mask, though face masks you don't put over your eyes no i know you could put them little cucumbers on there though (laughs) but yeah watching a great film i'm going to start with that actually because there is nothing wrong with a bit of film binging or box set series binging and just chilling out and watching some right rubbish i suppose or even an educational documentary if you want to fill your mind with lots of wisdom and lots of knowledge but if we go back to our acronym shed we've spoken about this quite a few times on previous podcasts for us we believe that if you can follow those four things this will help you to cope with things that are thrown at you through whatever period that you're going through remind everybody what does the s in shed stand for yeah so s is for sleep and this is something we've talked about really passionately throughout the future toolbox and the first chapter in our book the z to a of life skills is actually z for z's isn't it so S for sleep or Z for Z's, whichever way you look at it, it is about getting regular sleep, getting enough sleep, but also on this time of chill out and maybe time of your holidays where people can throw their body clocks out Mm. a little bit as well and start laying in really late and maybe having late nights going to bed and everything. And then when they do have to go back to work or school or education or whatever it is, it can be quite difficult to then get back into that routine. I remember you had a friend that you used to work with who used to start regulating her body clock about two or three days before, setting her alarm two or three days before she finished a holiday, didn't she? She did, and fair play to her. So that meant coming home or going back to work or school or whatever it was eased into a lot more gently than just all of a sudden going from what you've been used to to having the alarm go off at say six o'clock in the morning and you feel so groggy for that day and the next coming days yeah and people used to laugh at her funnily enough didn't they but she actually was on to a real winner there because she came back from work and was more effective in her job absolutely so s is for sleep but in the acronym shed what does the h stand for simply hydration again it's just one of those things that we can't emphasize enough making sure that you keep yourself hydrated and the best thing that you can drink to keep yourself hydrated is simply water <laughs> yeah you get it out of a tap don't you you can buy expensive bottled water if you like but it just comes out of the tap just yeah. drink as much of it as you really need yeah i can't remember what the exact recommendations are but i don't think you could ever drink enough and a simple test to make sure whether you're hydrated or not is if your tongue feels dry you need water yeah i had that the other morning i woke up and the roof of my mouth was really really dry so the first thing i do when i get up every single morning and this was no exception is to go and drink a big glass of water you always have a cup of tea don't you i do but i drink water through the evening when when i'm asleep i often wake up and feel a bit thirsty so 
always got a pint of water next to me so make sure that I don't even have to get out of bed to get it <laughs> yeah so incidentally the recommendation is about eight glasses of water a day but apparently there's no science behind that there's no science on what size of glass no that's true yeah because you, can... you know you can get really sh- tiny shot glasses yeah. or a big two pint glasses so I don't know yeah. but sensibly yeah yeah and of course when it's hotter as well we need to drink more water so it's always factoring that in as well Yeah, totally and if you do the next letter in the acronym which is e for exercise then yes you're going to need more hydration because you're going to sweat more yeah absolutely so exercise is great we always talk about our passions on these podcasts of running and playing paddle and doing all sorts of epic events paddle boarding and so on now, exercise it isn't about pushing yourself to the absolute limits. We've just watched the Olympics where people are going to their full potential to try and win gold medals. And it's so inspirational and so emotional. But at the end of the day, exercise doesn't have to be that complicated. No. It could be just simply going for a walk around the park. Yeah, and if you're going for a walk around the park, make sure that it's quite a good pace. Just go for a very, very gentle stroll. Good, because you're still doing it. But try and go a little bit faster, get your heart rate up a little bit. Yeah, that sounds a really, really good idea. Challenge yourself. But it doesn't have to be, as I say, to absolute breaking points. So do something that you really, really enjoy. And that's another key as well, because there's a lot of people who join the gym and never go to it. Mm -hmm. The reason being is because sometimes the gym's not always the most convenient or it can feel like a chore or a task. And that's the same with anything. I've just used gym as one example. But you've got to really, really enjoy it. Yeah, and sometimes going to the gym, you can feel a little bit overwhelmed. Or if you go along and you see lots of people and you feel that they have been going for some time and you feel that they're better than you, it can sometimes have a little bit of a negative feel about it. So it's not the be all and end all, but if it's for you, then that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and we had that massively in the running community where people would sometimes turn up for a first run and they feel that imposter syndrome where they would walk into the room and think, oh my goodness, that person looks fitter than me, that person looks faster than me and whatever. And it's a big fear within running. And again, I think we've mentioned this in a previous podcast, the fear of coming last. I came last in a race not so long ago. I actually knew that I would come last because I saw the level of the other runners and I knew that they were much, much better than me. And I decided that this is my race. I'm going to do it how I want to do it. I'm not going to try and outdo them because... I knew that that wasn't in my capabilities at that point. I came last and I thoroughly enjoyed it. That's your exercise. So we've done the S, the H, the E. So what does D stand for? Yeah, we've talked again in previous podcasts about diet and the myth of going on a diet is to lose weight and count calories and everything. We're not talking about that at all. We're just talking about eating regularly, eating healthily and following our 80-20 rule, which is... 80% of the time you eat really good and 20% of the time you have the cake or the chocolate. Yeah, or the biscuit. Of course, yeah. Naturally, when you go on holiday, you might go to an all-inclusive restaurant or you might go somewhere where there's lots of ice creams and treats and things like that. So it might be a little bit easier to turn the 80-20 rule into the 20-80 rule (laughs) (laughs) and eat healthily 20% of the time if that. (laughs) But if you're on holiday, if you're taking a break from everything, do you know it's absolutely fine? absolutely fine the most important thing is that when you get back into your normal sort of routine is go back onto that routine and think about a sensible diet and that sensible diet is the food and the hydration so there's your shed if you look after your shed you'll be looking after yourself but there's other things that you could do because self-care is individual it's what suits you there's a multitude of things that you could do But a great thing to do is create a summer playlist. All your favourite tunes that make you feel motivated, make you feel like wanting to do that dance or sing along in the shower, whatever. Create yourself a summer playlist. Now, I remember this years ago. This just given me a memory because when I went on my first holiday, age 16, with my dad, I remember sitting there in his living room before we went away and we created a summer playlist. Now, this is on old cassettes where you record something off of a record or a CD. And we did that. We recorded our summer playlist, which we listened back to. Then me and you, when we first started going on holiday, we used to record CDs. We did. When you could record a CD and put it onto a CD player, remember that? And we used to take a little CD player on holiday with us, didn't we? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Now everything is digitalised. And what do we do? We still create summer playlists on 
Spotify platforms and yeah, things like that. Yeah. And it is really, really good to grab a load of songs together. I mean, obviously, you're not bound by how many you can create no, now. No. But just create fun things. We have different playlists for different moods. So we actually have a travel playlist that we created quite a while ago where we just picked a load of songs that reminded us of different holidays we were on. And that used to get us through the winter months sometimes, didn't it? It did, it did. However, as things we're talking about what we used to do and things have changed, you could have a look at summertime podcasts because podcasts might be your thing to listen to as opposed to music. Music might not be your thing. So why not listen to something that's out there to help you with your self-care or help you through the summer period? Yeah, like the Z to A podcast. Listen to back episodes of this. (laughs) You could binge listen to the Z to A of life. Do that. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. (laughs) But I'm going to chuck something else in there and something that I think if we're talking about self-care and looking after your mental health, I'm going to suggest that you have what I call a summer clean and that's get in your bedroom and give your bedroom an absolute thorough clean and change the sheets, maybe even decorate it or do something because it just makes you feel good having a wonderfully clean, you know where everything is, bright, lovely bedroom and that will help your sleep and how you feel mentally about spending time in your bedroom. Yeah, I think that's a really, really nice idea. Have a declutter. Maybe go through that cupboard that's all the stuff's in there that you don't actually need and pop it all onto Facebook Marketplace or on eBay or something like that and sell it and make a few quid as well. So really, in the simplest form ever, self-care, it's just the little things that we do to look after our own mental health. And that could be absolutely anything. But it's about trying to listen to how you're feeling, what it is you need and what you can do to make you feel good about yourself. So I'm going to ask you, Mark, I know sometimes through your brain injury that things do get on top of you and you feel a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit anxious. So what things do you do to help declutter your mind or look after yourself and make you feel better? Do you know, there's some really simple things I love. And one of them is doing quizzes. So I've got a few apps on my phone where Mm. I'll just play a simple quiz game. I like Song Pop, which is a game that I sometimes play with friends where you have to guess the intro or guess a bit of music from a famous hit or something. I also like Wordle as well, which is a really cool, simple game. You get one go a day where you have to guess a word in six guesses. And there's another one I've just started called Quiz Planet. And again, you can hook up with people and you play five or six rounds against each other and see who wins that. It's just really simple games that can take a few minutes. They don't take all day long to do and you don't get lost in them and end up wasting loads and loads of time. But it just gives you that real hit and it it gets your brain active as well. Even though you're decluttering your brain, it's putting something in there that's quite good. And obviously, a lot of listeners know on here that I'm on my guitar journey. I'm actually a year into my guitar journey now. And a few weeks ago, I played my first solo song without any backing, without anybody else. I was quite proud. But sometimes it can be just picking up the guitar and just learning a few simple chords or practicing a few simple chords. It doesn't have to be a whole song. And just hearing that sound, hearing the sound of the music that you create yourself... And of course, we practice together as well. So you sometimes get involved with the drumming. So that's really good. So I'm going to throw the question right back to you. What do you like doing? You You knew that was coming, didn't you? Yeah. What do I like doing? Gosh, I've got a few things. One of them is just sitting very quietly, possibly with a cup of tea, but often with a glass of water and just doing a crossword puzzle. Yeah. As simple as that, because it takes me completely away from anything and I focus on that. It might just be for 15, 20 minutes, but then I can go back to some, what it was that I was doing and feel calm, which is lovely. I do a lot of painting. I've started doing what's called fluid art or pouring art. So I've been creating some wonderful things with that and pottery just recently. So for me, my self-care is doing the things that I love doing that quieten my mind, things like that. And I just completely immerse myself in that creativity. And then I just feel wonderful. And I dance in the kitchen and I cook and I love doing all of that sort of thing. (laughs) So really, with self-care, it's not about what it looks like, but it's about what it does to you and how it makes you feel. And I read this quote, and I think this is really key and really important to think about when you're thinking about self-care so when it comes to that it's not one thing 
it's your thing. It's what it does to you. So don't worry about what anybody else is saying. Well, I do this. Mark plays the guitar. So it doesn't mean you've got to go and do that. Find your thing and do it. Look yeah. after yourself. That's a really, really good point, isn't it? Everything that we talk about really on the Z to A of life, there's tracks that we give people to run on here, but it's not saying one size fits all. Everything is really, really individual. And again, it's worth remembering that we get caught up in this world of perfection and social media and everything that's pushed across to us to say that you must do this, you must do that, pay this, pay that, this advert, that advert. And it gets really, really noisy. And it's about stepping away and forgetting what other people do and forgetting what other people are telling you to do and thinking, right, that works for me. That's what I'm going to do. And then just go and do it. Absolutely. Just go and do it. And please, I just hope you are looking after yourself. If you haven't been, then please do start doing it from now. Have a wonderful summertime self-care session and go over to our website, which is futuretoolbox.co.uk. You'll find loads of resources on there. You can also have a little bit of a scroll through social media. We will let you because we're on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. TikTok. We also have a YouTube channel with some fantastic videos on. And we're on LinkedIn if you want to reach out personally because we are. We're everywhere. We are indeed. So we look forward to catching you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us for the Z2A of Life Skills with Jules and Mark of the Future Toolbox. Don't forget to head over to their website, which is futuretoolbox.co.uk, where you can find lots of free resources, plus a host of books in the store, as well as subscribing to the membership site. Follow Future Toolbox Instagram, TikTok and Facebook at Future Toolbox and subscribe to their YouTube channel too.